Zach Bats, and you're here with Gander in my gear. And my guest today is Mr. Tim Hohouse. Hello, Tim. Hello. So, we're going to Gander in your gear. Tell us about this first item that you have. I believe this is your acoustic guitar. Yes, this is my main guitar. It's a Martin Triple Zero Fifteen, and I got this in 2008. It took a while to come. I ordered it in, I think, 2007, but it took about a year to come because of a mahogany band, because Gibson were using non-sustainable rainforest mahogany, and so therefore there was a ban on mahogany in the States, so it took a while to come from Pennsylvania to get to me. But this has been my main guitar. This is the one that's travelled with me all around the world since 2008. It's toured everywhere and is my go-to guitar. It's my main acoustic guitar and it's probably the most dependable. Inside it's got a, I don't know if you can see in there, but it's got a Rare Earth Mixed Blend Humbucker by Fishman in it. I had Pienzo pickups but they didn't really work out for me. I uh, kept on bashing them because the style I play is quite like that. Um, less so these days, I'm playing a little bit more folk punk stuff and that. I used to play the guitar almost exclusively in an open G major tuning, but now I play a lot more stuff in standard. So. Like that, so it's a bit more of a using this one for standard tuning, although I have used it for some G tuning and D tunings and stuff and D minors and stuff for blues stuff for the slide. I'm trying to focus a bit more on the electric guitars, which I'll talk about later, for the bluesier stuff and using this more as a folk punk and songwriter-y type guitar, playing in standard tuning, that's E, A, D, G, B, E, standard tuning. And uh, yeah, it's got a couple of bumps and bruises on it. It's got a, a little sticker on there where I used to hit the slide against it. I had a song where I would tap the guitar and I didn't realise how much damage it was doing. It's also been fixed up by my friend John Proctor, who fixes and does up all my guitars, does all my resets and everything. So big shout out to John Proctor. Thank you so much for all the hard work you do to all my guitars and keep them on the road really because I, I tour a lot obviously I do like 250 300 shows a year so guitars especially this one go through a lot of rigmarole and there's a lot of yeah basically a lot of wear and tear on them well wow, that one looks old yeah so this is my other acoustic guitar this is an old blues travelling guitar, and I have taken this one out on tour before. Um, it's particularly handy, as it's got here, if you can see, a little key thing, and if you use a drum key on it, you can take the neck off the body. But this guitar is incredibly old. I've been told it's an old 1950s blues travelling guitar. I'm not sure entirely, so I might be wrong here. But as you can see, it's been through the, the wars. Uh, even with me as well, I've had to put tape on to keep the pickup on. I put a pickup on it, I put an open uh, back jazz pickup, mainly because it was the only pickup that I could really find that would fit something like this. And I've got it just coupled under there. It does sound pretty cool when it's plugged in, um, but it also sounds really cool when it's played acoustic. I played it in exclusively on my album Just. I played it on this guitar. We recorded that one in the morning at uh, Chuckalumba Studios. So if you don't know Chuckalumba Studios, it's in the New Forest. It's where Electric Wizard recorded their album Dope Throne and John Stevens does an absolutely fantastic job. And I really enjoyed how quick we did that with this little guitar. It's got that really nice old school bluesy sound. this one usually tuned to either a G major or a D minor because that's kind of the blues and it's it sounds like it's with a slide the fretboard is a little high you can see so sometimes it can be a little high up 
for just sort of normal. But just sort of standard picking, so it's absolutely ace though for side. If you want that real sort of old school bluesy sound. And I picked this guitar up for £20 in a charity shop. I saw it and I just, I had no idea what it was. I had to replace the keys because the original keys were broken. But um, got the keys replaced on it and uh, had it done up a little bit because it was in a right old state. But I saw it in a charity shop and I thought, this is interesting. I kind of, £20 is £20, it's not, it's not much to pay for a guitar. And actually, I've used it a lot, but I don't take it out as much as I should do these days, because I just, it's a bit fragile, it is a bit old, and um, it kind of does one thing, which is that. <laughs> That's an old looking little banjo you have there. Yeah, so this one's quite old as well, this is my banjo. It's an old Windsor banjo. See the marking on there. And I believe, now I'm told by somebody who knows stuff about banjos, it's from for the Second World War because the Windsor Banjo Factory got bombed in the Second World War in Birmingham. It's made in Birmingham. And they no longer made banjos after the war. They didn't open back up. Now, I don't know how true that is, but that's what I'm told. And I was given this by a friend of mine who I used to work with at PRS, and she dropped this banjo in my lap, said my granddad passed away and wanted his instruments to be passed to people who would play them. And you look like the kind of guy who would play a banjo. So I don't know what that says about myself, but I look like the kind of guy who plays a banjo. Now, so it's quite old, and banjos are a pain in the ass to tune anyway, but it's had a few repairs over the years. Again, the keys have changed. I had wooden keys on this, like on the acoustic guitar. It had wooden keys on it, but I've had them fixed up to more durable keys. I've had the skin replaced because I went through the skin. I sweated through it. Uh, it managed to last all this time, and then it, <laughs> it went through. When I had it, it went right through to the resonation point there. And... Uh, I tend to play this in G open G tuning as well, just like my other blues stuff. And this guy does come out on tour with me quite a lot, and I kind of like him playing banjo. I'm not the greatest banjo player in the world, for sure. I've toured with better banjo players like Fabian Madison, Slackbird, well worth checking out their stuff. They're fantastic banjo players. I like to play the banjo. It gives a different instrument to play live on stage. It gives something a bit different sound wise and uh, that but I, I play in a very uh, probably unusual technique I, I either use my two finger like that or I finger pick like it was a guitar I do a full-on strummy sort of, sort of like my version of the claw hammer. I can't haven't quite grasp the proper claw hammer yet. But like that. So I really enjoy playing the banjo live. Uh, I don't play it enough. Obviously, certain tours, like if I come to the states or if I. I'm flying or on a bus, I can only really bring one instrument and then the usual acoustic guitar is the thing that comes. This guy comes when I can drive in my car and I currently don't actually have a hard case for it so I have to have it in a soft case, which isn't ideal. It is quite an old banjo. But yeah, it's been fixed up a lot over the years, new skin on it. Um, even though you can see already I've got a sweat mark where I've sweated on it. Uh, I'm quite a sweaty player, it seems. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a bugger to tune, <laughs> but it's a lot of fun to play. Well, this one looks a lot of fun. What's this? Yeah, so this is the last but not least of the acoustic instruments. 
is this fantastic Flying V SpongeBob SquarePants ukulele. Now this isn't actually mine, this is uh, my partner's and I bought them this for their birthday and they haven't really used it so it was more of an ornament for a while but I've kind of put it on a few little bits and bobs and as I do more folk punk stuff I feel like I need to get this on. I really do need a song though, a full song for this wonderful looking just amazing flying v spongebob square pants ukulele you can't you can't go wrong with that really can you look at it it's a it's a work of art <laughs> 